Father, we give you thanks. God, we give you thanksgiving for this awesome day of prayer in the spirit. As we face today, we face it with you almighty in our life. This morning, you and I are joining together in breakthrough prayer. We have just a few days left of our 21 days of fasting and prayer. And God's made a covenant with us that in these 21 days, this is what our experience would be. And I believe with all of my heart that God watches over his word to perform it. Now listen very, very carefully to me. In Isaiah chapter 58, <clears throat> there is two different ways that fasting and prayer are identified. One, it says, cry aloud, spare not, Isaiah 58 verse 1. It says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet, show my people their transgression and the house of Israel, house of Judah their sins. Yea, now this, this is a cry to reveal. Remember the law reveals sin. Now, as we go into this, we're going to see that there is a supernatural manifestation of grace in this time. And the law reveals sin. So the prophet is being told to reveal the sin. Isaiah is being spoken to reveal the sin. The law has been broken. Reveal the sin. The law has been broken. It says, yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They Asked of me the ordinances of justice, they take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore, so they're saying, here they are in sin, yet what their position was is daily they delighted. So God is revealing the sin, man is looking. to, let's call grace, but it wasn't given, not given yet. This is the time of fasting and prayer. Good morning. So Isaiah 58, it says, yet they seek me daily, delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God and asking me the ordinances of justice, they take delight in approaching to God. So God at this time and era, in, this is the season of law. Law reveals sin. Man is looking like God is operating by grace, but it wasn't yet given. And it says, wherefore have we fasted? So now they're asking as they're seeking God, as they're looking to know God, by what means have we fasted and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul and thou takes no knowledge? Behold the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exact your labors. You fast for strife, debate, to smite with the fist of wickedness. Shall you not call you shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. So what happened was, as man was fasting, this is man fasting, they are getting no results. Now, if in a fast, listen carefully, very, very, very carefully to me. In a fasting time, if, remember Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, be not like the heathen who think that for their vain repetitions their prayers may be heard. For your father knows what things you need of before you ask him. Very similar. The law reveals sin. Man at the time under the law is looking for grace, but it wasn't yet given. 
So man was fasting with no results. They're saying, God, I want to get my way. I, I want my pleasures fulfilled, and nothing is happening. Now, this is not the fast that God reveals. So this is not what God is doing. God is not giving no results. God is saying, this is not what I'm doing. It's not about us striving. It's not about us frustrated with results. And it's not about us seeking and not getting an answer. It's not about any dysfunction on our side. If you're feeling guilty, if you're having accusations, etc. Now let's read on because this opens up revelation. Now, I want to pray with you that God gives you revelation knowledge because the word of God will change you forever. Are you ready? Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, I thank you for supernatural revelation. God, that you open the eyes of our understanding. Give to us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Cause us to know not only the hope of our calling, but what the riches and the glory of your inheritance is in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of your power to usward who believe according to the working of your mighty power, which you wrought in Christ when you raised him from the dead and set him at your own right hand in heavenly places. You gave him to be head over all things to the church that he might fill all in all so that we would be the full manifestation of all that you're doing. And here in the last five days of this fast, God, we have seen you move magnificently. We have watched you deliver in supernatural ways. We have watched the discovery of areas of error and dysfunction. And we are still in the breakthrough time of this fasting and prayer. So stay focused because if the fasting and prayer time is creating frustration, it's not what God called, not frustration, not, not frustrating. It is not disappointment. That's what it's not. So what is it? What is the fast that God has called? Now listen, this is the answer. In verse 6, is not this the fast that I have chosen? Now this is what is not, right? So we got what is not. It's not about I fasted and I'm frustrated. I fasted with no results. I fasted and I tried to get my way. I tried to get my point across. I tried to debate and get my, nobody heard me. Nobody listened to me. That is not what God is doing. So then what is God doing? Right. Ha have you ever sought God? I mean, ha have you sought God and you ended up not getting your answers, being frustrated and disappointed? where you're striving in yourself, you're wanting to get your voice heard, you're wanting to get your point across, that's not what God is doing. So what is he doing? Oh, this is where we are coming into the most awesome breakthroughs that we have ever walked in in the face of the earth. We are uncovering by the conviction of consecration to God. We are committed to God in this consecration time to say, God, I am here for what you have spoken. And this is it. Verse 6, is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness. Now listen, this is God's fast. God's fast does something. One, it looses bands of wickedness. So what is a band of wickedness? It is something that is constraining your life with malintent. So you could be in an apartment complex 
and you have people around you that are doing drugs, acting wickedly, there's a, a band of wickedness. You could be in an employment environment and uh, there is dysfunction going on, there is deceit happening, there is, and these are bands of wickedness. You could be in family environment and there is destruction and words of negativity and frustration and anxiety and worry and these bands of wickedness that are around. Remember that we're not just talking about somebody out to stab you in the middle of the night. We're talking about everything that is unlawful in the presence of God. Listen again. Oh, my father, this gets exciting. It says to undo the heavy burdens. Number two. Undo the heavy burdens. What are heavy burdens? They are things that have been constantly laid on you that you carry consistently. I identify in my own life some of the, the burdens that are constant because of the fact they're there. Now you say, well, why don't you just get rid of them? Well, I do. I cast my care on the Lord. The anointing breaks every yoke. But yet there are certain things that have been carried through my walk and they have been the same burdens. Listen, how many of you have something that if you go back, you can honestly say that burden is still there. I've prayed, I've declared, I've stood, and yet it still is weighing on me. Anybody have that going on? Something still weighing on you? Still there? I mean, it could be generationally. It could be that you've got, let's just take finances, for example. You have the weight of constantly not knowing the financial condition of everything going on. That can be a burden. Let's take administration. You could have the burden of not having a, a good functionality of delegation of authority and responsibility and accountability coming back. That can be a burden. You can have a burden where you are weighted down with a disease. And every day you wake up, your bones, your muscles, your tissue, your ligaments, are, it's just burdening you. you. You could have a burden in your family where there's constant weight of anxiety and stress over that house. It is a burden. So his fast is to undo the heavy burdens. So I should expect every band of wickedness and every heavy burden to be lifted. Now let's read on. It gets better. And it says in verse 6, to let the oppressed go free that you break every yoke. All right. Now three, let oppressed go free. Four, you break every yoke. Now, what's a yoke? Repetitive cycle of behavior. Now, if you have a repetitive cycle of behavior that you have adapted in your life, this fast that God has called, he said, this is what I have chosen. I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness. Sometimes people are in abusive relationships that wickedness needs to be broken. Sometimes people have associative involvements that are wicked, they need to be broken. Sometimes the heavy burdens are constant and oppressive, they must be undone. The oppressed must be set free. So you might say, well, how would I be oppressed? I could be oppressed just being out of the perfect will of God. I could be oppressed doing something out of obligation, not out of consecration and direction. I could be oppressed by the simple fact that I am under some persecution, some sense of ostracization that is taking place and it's bringing oppression. So we let the oppressed go free, that you break 
every yoke, every repetitive cycle of behavior that has bound you to a certain pattern that is not functional in what God has spoken must be broken. So let's pray these three things right now. Thank God that there is a time we're in that the loosening of the bands of wickedness is in our life. Every wicked, deceitful, destructive influence, seen and unseen, known and unknown, that which is by principality power, that which is by spiritual wickedness. We live in a corridor where everything that would be, oh, thank you so much, honey. I appreciate that. Everything that would be wicked is being broken from around us. I want you to declare before Father that everything that is unlawful in his spirit is broken off your life. Everything, every way that's unlawful, everything that God has not spoken at this moment of time is off your life. God, I thank you that you undo the heavy burdens. We've separated ourselves to you, Father. We've called upon your name. You undo the heavy burdens so that we don't walk under the duress of this stress. But God, we walk in the high places. You said we get feet like hind feet. We thank you, Father, for the loosening of your great grace, the power of your awesome freedom. We thank you that everyone oppressed is set free. God, that no one is held to commitment, obligation, nor functionality that restrains them. God, they are loosed, loosed from their words, loosed from their attitude, loosed from their fears, loosed. You did not give us a spirit of bondage again to fear, but you gave us a spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So we declare and decree, God, today, the release of that very influence of that bondage in our life. We refuse to live under the voice of fear, intimidation, insecurity, inferiority, all that have been, all that are today in this time of fasting and prayer, go free. Father, we give you praise and that we break every yoke, every cycle, everything that binds us to a destructive pathway of thinking, motivation and action, everything that makes us servitude to that which is not at the highway of the living God. Father, we declare the release of the yoke, the breaking of it. Holy Spirit, we bless you. God, everything that in our thinking, in our perception, in our persona, everything that surrounds us in our atmosphere that's been wicked, that's been burdening, that has been oppressing, that has been a yoke, we declare it lifted, it broken, it severed. God, you called today a day of freedom, a day of supernatural grace, a day of abundance in your call, a day of walking in the counsel of the knowledge of your will, a day where we engage the fast that you've called. God, not where we live frustrated, where we try to get our point across, where we try to have our voice heard, but God, a day where your voice is heard, a day where your peace that passes all understanding where your wisdom is first of all pure peaceable gentle easy to be entreated full of good fruits all manifest in our life oh my god we bless you we bless you we bless you we bless you let's read down yes right Here, you have to tell the story so that that's part of what's coming up next in the scripture. Well, this thing's not coming on. You know, you just have to speak loud enough so they can hear it's not coming on. Yeah, last, last week I was concerned about something and it, and it bothered me and my blood pressure went up to two, 210 over 113. And, and so I went to the doctor, and the doctor prescribed some medication for me. But I turned it over to the Lord, and, I, and right now I'm not on medication. 
Amen. And my blood pressure it, it, this morning was was 117 over 78. Amen. Amen. That burden's not yours. Yeah, this wouldn't come on. So let's look at the next scripture here. I mean, God's doing it. Then it says, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry that you bring the poor that are cast out into thy house when you see the naked that you cover him and that you hide not yourself from your own flesh? So the next one is you reach out and you meet the needs of people. Meet people where they are. Now, it doesn't say you meet the, the excesses of people. It says that you deal your bread to the hungry. You take those that are cast out into your home. So you've got the idea. Then it says, then shall your light break forth as the morning. Now, the result of this is very powerful. It says, then. These are the results. One, light breaks forth. Where there had been darkness, now there's penetration. Now there's illumination. Where there was darkness, you know, Reverend Ray was talking about pressure on him. And light broke forth. And I got someone saved right here for that. Yeah, and you got the lady saved that's helping you at the house there. And it says, and thy health shall spring forth speedily. So, number two, health springs forth. Your light breaks forth and health breaks forth. So this time of fasting breaks wickedness, burdens, oppressed go free, yoke gets broke, People are met where they are, and now our light breaks forth as a noonday. Our healing springs forth speedily, and it goes on. It says, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rare reward. Now, what does it mean, your righteousness going before you? That means my standing in God has already paved the way. So I'm not striving in my attempting, righteousness has gone before me. Before. And glory is my rear reward. Now, glory. When you talk about Abraham, it, it talked about, and who has given him all of this glory? It talks about the immense Wealth that has been there. The outshining of that which has been internally hidden. So when something is in its glory, like a, a morning glory of, in its full bloom, in its full expression. So the right standing with God goes before. So nothing that's unlawful before you can stand. And the completion is what happens. Remember our three basic thrusts of motivation and momentum is to engage, align, and fulfill. So we're engaging, we're aligning our life with his word, and that glory is our rear reward. Then it goes on. So I'm expecting this to be my daily life. I'm expecting everything that oppressed binds and limits to be broken. I'm expecting light wherever darkness was. It's penetrated. I'm expecting hell springs forth. I'm expecting the Lord goes before me and his glory, the completion, the wholeness is my rear reward. <clears throat> now, then you'll call and the Lord will answer. Then you'll cry and he'll say, here I am. So what's the next result? Answered prayer. You've got areas that have been before God, and all of a sudden, he says, I'm here. I, I'm not obscure. I'm not in delay. I'm here, and I'm here now. 
You'll cry and he'll say, I'm here. So answers come speedily. You get a quick hearing. You get a quick response to that prayer life. So there's an action that takes place. You get the answer prayer. <clears throat> then it goes on. If you take away the midst of you, the yoke, the putting forth of the finger and the speaking vanity. Now here goes again, one of our points. Number six it says there are certain ifs. Look at these, because this is all part of it. I can't expect the fulfillment of the word of God to just manifest without the internal alignment of my life. It says, if you take away the midst of the, the yoke. So you take away, away the yoke. So I undo the heavy burdens, I break every yoke, now I take the yoke away. I can't get re-entangled in it again. I take it away. If, if I have had a propensity of going into negativity in conversation, then the people that are prone to negativity with me, I break the words so that I don't engage in that negativity, and I also take the affiliation, I take the association away. I, I remove the involvement with that which would bind me to what I know had held me restricted. Let's say you are in a constant cycle of frustration in a financial endeavor and you are trying to uh, get a job at Kmart, Walmart, whatever, and that is a frustrating, uh, disappointing, endeavor but you keep trying the same thing over and over again and every time you keep hearing in your mind you keep muddling in your thoughts you keep speaking oh it's not working for me it's not having so I'm going to break that yoke and now I'm going to take it away from me I am going to hear from God there's a whole new direction there's a whole new way that God is revealing I'm not going to be bound I'm taking it away from me it's like a person with cigarettes or some type of an addiction or some area of compromise you just not only break it, but you take it away. You don't call the person again. Some people are, are in caustic relationships where they're, they're, the relationship is just destructive in their functionality in life. They don't just break the words and attitudes. They might have to remove them from their, their phone list, break the, the Facebook, take them off of Facebook friends, or whatever. They've got to take it away. Then it says... Not only you take it away, but you also remove the pointing forth of the finger. So you stop pointing the finger. So what's pointing the finger? Right. It's blaming somebody else. It's accusing someone else. It's saying, look what they did. Look what they're doing. Look how they affect me. Look what they said to me. Look what they're doing to affect me. That's, that's if you take away the pointing of the finger, and then if you take away speaking vanity. Speaking vanity. What's Vanity. Aimless, purposeless, without objectivity, without design, just filling the void of air with meaningless words. So you take away the speaking vanity. Well, you know, hardly anybody's going to come to blessings today because they're calling for rain. That's speaking vanity. That's speaking vain words. Oh, uh, we, we've got two Sundays that they're, they said a storm is coming this weekend. So uh, the weekends are going to be messed up. We're not going to have a good weekend because two weekends storms came in. That's speaking vanity. Uh, it's, it's Monday. Oh, I, I hate getting up on Mondays and going to work. That's speaking vanity. Uh, it's, it's, you got the idea. Every area that our mouth speaks vain statements he says take away the yoke remove what had bound you don't just break it but get it out of your access realm 
Don't accuse another. Don't excuse. Don't look for some dimension of blame and don't speak the vain jargon. I use a statement of just simply don't be an echo of the environment that you're in. Now we identify something is happening from God. It says, and if you draw out your soul to the hungry. Now, this is number nine. These are our actions. Soul feeds hungry. Well, what, who, what's a hungry soul? It's someone who's inquisitive, someone who is desiring answers, someone who is in an area of deficit that you have benefit to them. It doesn't say you feed the hungry. It says you draw out your soul. So if I have someone that's saying, I need you to show me how to fix this light switch, and they don't have the light working, but I know that if you take those two little screws out of there, and I know that if you turn off that breaker and one of the wires is broken, we can strip back the plastic, bend the wire around, tighten it up. Here I'm drawing out my soul to the hungry. A person has a natural perspective and need, and I'm drawing out of myself the capacity of meeting their need. So I draw out my soul to the hungry. Then it goes on. And satisfy the afflicted soul. Now, what's satisfaction? Yeah, so, so there's, a, there's a fulfillment. Engage, align, and fulfill. So it's just like Jesus said, if you see the person hungry, you don't say, peace be filled, the Lord go with you. He said, you feed them. You, you, you don't. It's like if you got somebody broke down on the side of the road and you have the ability to change their tire and there's nobody else around to change the tire, you, you don't drive by and, and wave at them and say, I'll pray for you. You, you satisfy the affliction. You change the tire. You do what you, you got the idea. So the, the environment around me becomes the environment that God's fasting begins to influence. So now for me, I'm taking away the yoke. I'm not speaking vanity. I'm, my soul is being poured out to those that are hungry and I'm looking for their satisfaction. Is it okay now? Is this working for you now? Do you understand? Is it understood? Are you, because a person could be afflicted and we're designed to satisfy it. It doesn't mean that we're the source of it, but it means that we provide the satisfaction to the emotion, the mind, the will, the faculty of that individual to a capacity that we're not leaving them half broken in the wake of our action. Then it goes on. It says, then shall your light, oh, look what happens on this side. Your light, I love this, shall rise in obscurity and darkness shall be as your noonday. So light out of obscurity And darkness, the worst that exists, the worst will be as 12 noon. So what does that mean? You can't find a shadow of darkness because light has dawned. At noonday, if you think about if you are with the sun directly above you, the only shadow that's being cast is at your feet. So there's something about the noonday and the light of it that is critical. It's that nothing is in the shadow. It is simply fully revealed from above. Everything is in alignment. Everything's in alignment. Everything's in alignment. This is part of the covenant promises that we have 
and remember the promise make us a partaker of his divine nature. So these are six fulfillments that God has promised. And here's the seventh. The Lord will guide you continually. Number seven, continual guidance. Number eight, look at it. These are our experiences. Satisfy your soul in drought. Negativity is around you. Your experience is a plus experience. You're satisfied in the midst of a drought. Everything around you can be going through mayhem, confusion, disarray, dysfunction, but you live supernaturally saturated and satisfied in the grace of God. Number nine, and shall make fat your bones. So now, here comes your health again. Number 10, That's, these, these get awesome. Thou shalt be like a watered garden like a spring of water whose waters fail not. So you have a watering never fails. So I can expect a never ending spring of water of life constantly flowing. I can expect God manifesting to say, does that have anything to do with what Jesus did? Well, remember, this beginning part is under the law. This is all under a dimension of grace because what we're doing is we're saying to our humanity, you have no right to rule us. We are under the governance and lordship of Jesus and all these manifestations, our light breaks forth, our health springs forth, our righteousness goes before us, your glory, the completion is our rear reward. You answer our prayer, your light, my light out of obscurity. The worst in my life will be like a noonday sun. You'll guide me continually in a drought. I'll be like a watered garden. My waters will never fail. And it says, and they that shall be of thee. Now, this happens. People start moving. They that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. So these, I mean, look at what's going on. All of a sudden, let's get rid of this because this is not what God's doing. Now, this is the fruit. Fruit is the reproductive right of the tree, the plant. It has within it the seed. The fruit. So what is the fruit? It says in verse 12, they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. Thou shalt be called the repair, the restorer of the breach, the repair of the breach, the restorer of the paths to dwell in. We are the righteous as the tree of life. That's right. So Ray, you're going to go win souls and you're going to pray for those that have need of prayer. And you're going to deliver the oppressed. You're going to take every person that has had some negative experience and break every yoke. Amen. You're going to silence the voice of the accuser. You're going to take away every speaking of vanity. Every hungry person gets fed. You're going to give them God's love. You're going to give them, yeah, give them God's love. And all that is promised is come to manifest. Oh, thank God. So I want you to pray for them out there that's watching us right now. We have hundreds that are on, and I just want you to pray for the great grace of God to prevail in their life. Heavenly Father, we, we lift everyone watching this video today to you. Bring them into your, your plan, purpose, and calling. Open their eyes that they'll see the plan and purpose and calling that you have for each one of them. In Jesus' name, give them, Lord, the gift of eternal life. Through, 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 through your love. Lord, you, 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 your love is poured out upon us and because we love the brother and because you first loved us. 
and love, and he that does not love is not of God. And if there's anyone watching here that doesn't have love, the, the scripture says that you're, you, you, it's, it's not of God. So I want you to receive this free love of gift by inviting Jesus in your heart. You know, God loves you so much that he sent Jesus to die on the cross and pay for your sins. He became your substitute that you might become the righteousness of God in him and, 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 and become an heir and a joint heir with him. How do you do that? You, you can't earn it because it's a gift. The price was the blood Jesus shed on the cross, and you can't pay a higher price than that. The Bible says we're saved by God's grace through faith, and it's not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, not our good works, no matter who should boast. So the way is very simple. It's, it, it's, believing, it's confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart. Romans 10, 9, 10 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's God's promise. And God, and God does not lie. So, so if you believe that Jesus is the son of God, that he died on the cross and rose again, receiving his love into your heart is a prayer inviting him into your heart. So repeat this prayer and God's word promises that if you're not saved, you will be. Just say, Father in heaven. Father in heaven. Thank you for your love for me. Thank you for your love for me. That you gave your son Jesus. You gave your son Jesus. To die for me. To die for me. Jesus Christ, Son of God. Jesus Christ, Son of God. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Be my Lord and Savior. Be my Lord and Savior. And wash me clean. Wash me clean. With the innocent blood innocent blood that you shed on the cross you shed on the cross and by the power of your holy spirit by the power of your holy spirit live inside of me live inside of me and make me a new creation and make me a new creation jesus i declare that you are lord jesus i declare you are lord now be lord of my life now be lord of my life and from now on and from now on i'm going to live for you i live for you if you meant that say amen amen you know if ephesians 2 7 1 corinthians 5 17 says if any man is in christ he's a new creature a new creation old things have passed away behold all things have become new that's called being born again now you're born of God's spirit and, and you have his nature in you and you need to hear, hear his voice, get into his word and read his word and be obedient to his word. God bless you. Amen, Ray. Bless you. Give him heaven. Come on back in a little bit and give us a testimony. So what we've done here in Isaiah 58 is this is what we have our part of engaging. All right. This is where we align. We align. Our light breaks forth. So once light is present, we don't go back to darkness. Once health springs forth, we continue in the continual healing. Once righteousness has gone before us and its fulfillments begin, we experience and align our life only for that. Once we live in answered prayer, we know, our Father, you hear me always. Once our light comes out of obscurity, we never cower back in the sense of insecurity and inferiority. Once our worst, which would be now as a noonday, we never, we don't align ourselves with the, the casting of the shadows. We live in the light of life. Now he continually guides us. We align ourselves with continual guidance. We align ourselves that in times of parched, dry places, God waters us. He fattens our bones. His waters never fail. And now we have fulfillment. So as we fulfill, this is what gets fulfilled. Verse 12, they that shall be of thee shall build old waste places. What gets fulfilled? Number one, old waste places. You say, what's well, a waste place? Waste place is like a garbage heap. Somebody drives by it, it's useless, worthless for nothing. But you take what has been useless, worthless for nothing, and now you build it. So you fulfill 
God's capacity to build. What am I building? I'm building old waste places. You say, what's an old waste place? Well, this person's been on heroin for so many years. Their life is destroyed. They've been on crack cocaine. They've been on methamphetamine. All their teeth have fallen out. There's, there's no hope for them to be able to, their bone is through osteopenia, osteoporosis. They've had uh, liver failure. They've got kidney failure. They've got all these things. It's a waste. Their life is a waste. Their future's a waste. Their family's a waste. Well, I'm here to build it. Why? Because I've aligned my life to his nature. I've aligned my life to the fulfillment of it. So I'm not looking for something great to make it the most great, I'm looking for what has been wasted and see it built. So something's going on in the atmosphere. This fast is not about making something that is great, the most great, and the admiration of everybody on earth. This is all about now our eyes turn to waste. It turns to the broken, the disenfranchised, it turns to the hurt. It turns to the destroyed. And now we begin our building. We begin building, and, it, and this is part of the building. It says, thou shalt build old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. Build. Now this one here is raise up foundations. of many generations. Now you think, how do I raise up the foundations of many generations? You have people that are Hispanic, you have people that are Lithuanian, you have people that are Ukrainian, that are different ethnic, different socioeconomic, different areas, and their generations have been without foundation. You may have children that grew up in a single parent home and they have no idea what it's like to live in a loving, nurturing environment because they were either left alone at the home and they've fended for themselves from five years old and up or they were left in the street. I mean, th these are foundations that were never laid. So our, our passion is to raise up the foundations of many generations. So what happens when you, when you look at a society that has lived, we, we did the whole uh, teaching on abandoned, dealing with the, the heart cry of parenting and the need of foster care and adoptive parents. And so it's part of the fulfilling. We engage exactly what God says we are to do in our part and function. We align, we know that what God's doing we're aligned with, and now we fulfill. I don't go and take light into more light. I take light into darkness. I take what has been restored in me into what has been broken in others. So we raise up the foundations of many generations. And then it says, Thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach. What's a breach? Repair. Breach. It is where there's a wall and there's an access of the enemy that you repair Isaiah declared, I sought for a man to make up the hedge, but I could find none, an intercessor, one that would stop the infiltration of this destruction from happening. They repair the broken place where the enemy has had access, the access point. That's what happens. You become a repairer of the breach. And then it says, finally, it says, restorer of paths to dwell in. Now, restore pathway. 
Now, if I restore a pathway, let's take, for example, a storm comes in and all the trees are down and the only route through that forest is a, a road that now 40 trees have fallen over and we cannot deliver the goods from one side of the forest to the village on the other side. And I'm going to go in with a team of people and take out the wood, remove it, restore the road. I'm restoring the pathway by which sustenance can be delivered to those people. If people have gone off biblically and they don't know the way of Jesus and how he operated, I restore the pathway of Jesus. You say, what's that? Well, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So what's his pathway? Sacrifice, burial, resurrection, ascension, his blood, his name, Christ in us, and the utterance of God. It's a pathway. So we're here to restore the pathway. So the enemy gets in and has accessed people in sidetracks. Well, we repair the breach. But the foundations are not there. People don't have the very fundamental elementary comprehension of salvation and redemption. Then we raise up the foundation of many generations. But the people that we're dealing with are so wasted. They, they're so disoriented. They are so dysfunctional. Oh, that's our functionality. You see, we build old waste places. So once I engage in what God has given response to his ability in, and I see that I'm aligned with him. I now know I'm commissioned to fulfill. Again, it's not to make the excellent more excellent. It's to make the waste habitable. It's to make the foundation that it was desecrated and destroyed raised up to be able to stand. It is to stop the enemy's access and it is to create and restore the pathways to dwell in. So something in this time of fasting and prayer, I'm looking for, and what I'm looking for is defined. It's defined very carefully in Isaiah 58. So this is a, a, an expose, if you will, of Isaiah, an exegesis of Isaiah 58. Now, as we go into this and we finish up this week, next Saturday, we will have finished the fast. The fast is over on the 23rd. And let's see what, what day that is. That is Wednesday. Then we go into Saturday. Now, this is what these 21 days, I could go in and tell you hair-raising stories of what God has done this fast so far that have absolutely shifted so many areas so that we become proficient and effectual in building old waste places, raising up the foundation of many generations, repairing the breach, restoring the pathways, aligning ourselves. I could go through on a personal life, I could go through on a ministerial life. I could go through on a world mission life. I could share how we've been able to provide Bible training into Zambia where they were, all these pastors were about to have their churches closed because they did not have formalized Bible training. And now we have shipped off the, the entire Bible school to train 80 churches in this one little group but it's going to become a sustainer of hundreds and hundreds of churches in the country just simply because God has given us the ability to raise up a foundation for a whole generations to live and thrive in the gospel of Jesus. It all happens in these 21 days. I want you to thank God for supernatural manifestations. Take a moment. We, we've taken some time this morning because it'll be our last Saturday in this time of fasting and prayer as our initiative where we are focusing singularly on God's chosen fast. I want you to just thank God for the awesome presence, the awesome power of light 
coming out of obscurity, that even our darkness is like the noonday, that whatever the enemy's assignments are, we break every yoke. Wickedness is destroyed. If we are part and parcel of the cause, we not only break the yoke, but we put the yoke far from us. So not only do we cease and desist and break the cycle, but God, that which is even engaging us in the cycle is not part of our time and our behavior and our connections anymore. Father, I give you praise for the victory and the triumph 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 that battle after battle after battle, we are more than conquerors. God, I thank you that no weapon formed against us will prosper. Every tongue that rises up against us in judgment, we condemn. Father, I thank you that the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. That we give no entertainment, no entertainment, no hearing, no speaking of that which is vanity. We silence the voice of that which is the pointing of the finger. We remove it from our vernacular. We loose it from our commitments. And we have no one that we're levying blame or claim of responsibility on because our eyes are on you. Now, next Sunday, next Saturday, I want you to commit next Saturday into the hands of God. We've got a few days left of this fast, and I believe God for a quick work, a very quick expedient exposing, a quick severance of areas of wickedness and bondage, a very quick loosening of the burdens, a very quick release of putting off the, the yoke and getting it out of our life, a very quick night turning into day. A very quick wellsprings of salvation rising up with joy. God, we give you praise. We give you praise for a quick work manifest. I want you to pray for the body of Christ. That as we are in this time of fasting and prayer, this is our experience. That every person walks experiencing the loosening of the bands of wickedness, undoing the heavy burdens, letting the oppressed go free. That we break every yoke. That we meet people where they are. We take away the yoke, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of vanity, and we feed the hungry soul. We get the needs of humanity touched, strengthened, endeared, endowed, and empowered. God, you've ordained us to engage your nature, your life, your power. Father, we thank you that light breaks forth as a noonday, that our health springs forth speedily, that our righteousness goes before us, and your glory is our rear reward. Oh, God. Every step we take comes to a fruition, a completion, so you can see glory behind us. Oh, God, I thank you that we call you answer, and even our light comes out of obscurity, and the worst that has ever been known in our life reveals the best of your grace and power in manifestation. Father, I thank you that you continually guide us we're guided in family decisions. We're guided in business. We're guided in financial. We're guided in health decisions. We're guided in socio involvements. We're guided in global evangelism. We're guided in personal evangelism. We're guided in church building and developing. We're guided. And Father, we thank you that you said you would satisfy the afflicted soul and make our bones fat. God, that there is strength and life emanating from within 
that the creation of our cellular structure in our body, Father, produces life, restoration, that from the inside out, healing virtue manifests over disease, that every arthritic, every cancer cell, every dysfunction in the pancreas, all diabetic functions, God, we speak, spring forth healing. Healing manifest. My God, we give you praise. You said we'd be like a water garden, that our constant fruit bearing and blossoming would be never ending, that our waters would fail not, that we would be a fruitful field, we would be a never ending constant production of supernatural harvest and seed bearing. You said your word goes forth out of your mouth, it never returns to you void, but it waters the earth and makes it bring forth in bud that it might give seed to the sower, bread to the eater, so shall your word be that goes forth out of your mouth, it shall not return to you void. God, I thank you. We are ever watered. We are ever harvesting. We are ever watered. We are ever harvesting. We are constant in our functionality, unwavering in our conviction and walk. God, I give you praise. Oh, God. Oh, my God, we bless you. We bless you for great grace. I want you to thank God that we, the body of Christ, are building old waste places. That God has ordained us to take the destruction that happened in the economic world in 2008, just in this nation, and rebuild the dignity, the, the lifestyle, the fulfillment of just family unity and the discord that has been there. God, that we bring forth wholeness. We speak wholeness in homes, supernatural clarity of directives and wisdom. Oh, Father, we stand in the awesome place of knowing that we raise up the foundations of many generations. God, that any generation destruction, any generational curse, every way in which man has desecrated the covenant of marriage, the covenant of house, God, we call it restored. God, we covet, call it restored. My God, we call it restored. Father, open our eyes to see wherever there's a breach where we can make up the hedge, stand in the gap where you, Jesus, ever lived and make intercession for us. God, we believe you, that you open up our eyes to see how to pray together with the Spirit of God. God, how to hear in our prayer that which you're uttering. For the Spirit of the Lord, you ever make intercession for the saints according to the will of God. God, that every pathway that we're designed to walk down is restored, is cleared, is cleared. We bless you. Habanon da repato share papa dosa kara mamando sabaka wewe. 
Lemana yo do shareba krush kude me hasire me kurban suata bangade chiche wuk denge de sel baba. Hebana mandrosuku de men suat de kara mandrosuku de bade dewe. Oh, my father, we magnify you. God, we thank you that you've put into our hands the power, the keys. Whatever we bind on earth is bound in the heavens. Whatever we loose on earth is loosed in the heavens. You said we are given right and empowerment to restore the pathways. God, we are endowed with the power to restore revelation. Make men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which has been hid in Christ. To make men experience. Oh, my Father, just commit tomorrow into God's hands that as we covenant together in this time of celebrating our faith as a body of Christ, that we join with one heart, one accord, one voice, one mind, one spirit to magnify the one Father over all. My God, we bless you. Oh, God, we ask you, God, to open the eyes, open the ears, move your people from glory to glory. God, we ask you to transform from the life that is common, ordinary, dysfunctional in its best, to be your effective instrument of war, a tool in the hand of the living God, a battle axe in the hand of God to destroy, render powerless the works of darkness. Oh God, oh my God, we bless the great grace. We magnify the supernatural works and we set ourselves together to see you, hear you, move in you. Mm. Abana dosa bara doska reba handaya soko reba nkare che wuyo toska rende mesuku. Pe esuku de mando akadiche un ehe kua kumanka ehe kua kea chuene mangura suku de mando rasuku de bangara sekeda dende wede. My father, we bless the great grace. Kiri de sekiri pe de skuro hodo hochi wadju 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 wambaka bara suku de mando rasa rende mando. You said you'd bring your children from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. We call forth the souls of men, women, children. We call forth the young adults. We call forth the teens. God, we call them forth to the governance of your glory, 
to the deliverance of your grace, to the freedom of your spirit. We speak the loosening of limitation, frustration, intimidation. We speak the marginalization of the government of God to be silenced and broken. That the main script of every person's life is centered on the gospel and the call of their spirit. O oh, Spirit of God, we abandon all that is in this atmosphere of human endeavor. And God, we are the called. We are the separated. We are the anointed. We are the appointed. Your work of your sacrifice has taken out all that pertain to this world. All that the law, the curse, all sin took out man, others. God took out all iniquity so that we could operate in your nature and fulfillment. Prendo <laughs> Eko ya torendo ha share me had basare kodo. Hikine mendo yosuko de fragere suko de mendo rasuko de mendo rasuko de mendo de kadengere mere chile bagoye. Ide mendo yosuko de pakre suko de mendo. Hore me had basare fare sire ne mendo rasuko de mendo de kadewe. Hikide mendo rasuko de mendo rasuko de bangre chi 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 wo ya kodo makare mendo. Hikide mendo rasuko de mendo rasuko de mendo ro kodo ma had mendo wa de. Oh god. Father, shift us to the dynamic dimension and the fulfillment of your utterance. Shift us to operate as sowers and consumers of your harvest. Move us to see the fields planted by you. Open our eyes, God, to make us effectual in repairing the waste. God, restoring the desolation of generations. God, repairing the breach, restore paths to dwell in. Now in the Bible, there are many examples of supernatural, transference of wealth. Every person used of God supernaturally had transference of wealth. Joseph in the prison managing the wealth of the known world in a day by interpreting a dream of seven years of plenty, seven years of drought. 
Abraham left Haran with nothing, ends up being the wealthiest. Famine takes place. Isaac is born. Isaac is born with nothing. Extremely wealthy at the time when it came to blessing that Esau found himself with the firstborn, yet Jacob, the second, ends up receiving the blessing but did not get money. If you look at Jacob's life, his life walked out individual, barren and penniless when he went to his uncle Laban. Every person in the word of God came on the financial fulfillments of the covenant of God from nothing. Everyone. Everyone came from the financial position of nothing. And from nothing, God gave everything. The Israelites coming out of the bondage of Egypt were slaves, came out of the wealth of Egypt. When they went in to possess the promised land, they were given houses and lands and fields. They didn't build them. They were transferred to them. When you look at Jacob and after Laban for 20 years had deceived him by one dream and in about one year, the whole transference of wealth took place by one dream. It keeps going. Nehemiah, the cupbearer of the king, gets disturbed in his spirit about how the gates are burned with fire and the walls are broken down in Jerusalem. He goes to a tax series and he asks, and he gets letters that whole fields and forests are cut down and laborers are given to him. I mean, immediate, just God. We could just keep going on and on from the first man, Adam, all the way through to the New Testament when they sold their houses and lands and laid the value at them at the apostles' feet. And it says, and none of them lacked. Where Jesus said, you never left house, mother, father, sister, brother, wife, children, for my sake in the gospel shall not in this time receive houses, brethren. Then he goes on into and says lands. The transference of wealth in the Bible has been and always will be a non-cumulative ability from man's ability. It is always going to be an awakening of God in man that he is the heir of the earth. Abraham believed the earth was his. Now you might say, well, I've tried to believe that before. God cannot lie. His word is unfailing, unchangeable, unalterable. As we take a step into next Saturday, God giving the body of Christ the power to get wealth, to establish his covenant, we will experience many multimillionaires stepping into not the accumulation of wealth, but the administration of wealth, where the purpose is to establish God's covenant. We will see many step into a multiple of capacities of managerial, administrative, acquisition, skill sets that will shock the world the ability to own patents, the capacity to sell words that are spoken. And words that are spoken will be worth phenomenal wealth because the words are not heard, but they transform man. God's spirit is in this earth and the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. God, we covenant together. I want you to commit this next Saturday. We're going to begin tomorrow in the message 
of awakening and laying a foundation, then Saturday is going to be the release of the power, the capacity, the functionality to get what belongs as inheritance in our life. I want you to pray for me that we don't get bogged down in detail, but we become effectual in principle and penetration. That the conscience of man shifts to the awareness of God. That the comprehensible mindset, the way in which man thinks, shifts to the way in which God thinks. So that the ways that man approach something shift from the way man does it to the way God has ordained it to be. I want you to pray for me for next Saturday, this Sunday, and throughout the course of this next week as we prepare for the release of power to get wealth. I want you to pray for me that there is a clear sound there is no muddled voice, that there is clear penetration. There's not definition, but there's penetration. God, you spoke to me that you put a financial anointing functionality in my life. I've seen you Prove that word over and over again in me. Father, I set before you the body of the living Christ from whom they are of you. In you they live and through you every action is taken. God, give me the speech of a tongue of a ready writer to write the word of God on the tablet of hearts and minds. God, give me utterance, a door of utterance that's open boldly, whereby I might speak boldly as I ought to speak. Father, that it not approach and appeal to the intellect, but God, it penetrate to the comprehension of the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of you. And God, our experience is aligned with you. God is aligned with you. It's not aligned with us. It's aligned with you. Your covenant is established in earth. My God, Delehano, Delehano. I want you to pray for people to loose their mindsets that their income is from a natural means, that their way and means by which life is sustained is only by hours labored or monies that have been reserved but they step into the consciousness of God who said to the Israelites, borrow off your neighbors, the Egyptians. That said to Jehoshaphat, you shall not fight this battle for the battle is the Lord's. And it took them three days to gathering in of all the spoils. That spoke to David, you shall surely recover all at Ziklag. That your body not hear the ways of men, but God, they hear the voice of your spirit. God, so speak in us that we not hold dear, we don't hold near anything that you've designed to be serviceable for your kingdom. God, 
the burden of worry, the burden of anxiety, the burden of how to, the burden of where from, the burden of when will, we command that yoke broke and that burden lifted. My God, we live with your word. It's he, it's he that gives you power to get wealth that he may establish this covenant which he swore unto your fathers as it is this day. He gives you power. He doesn't give you wealth. He gives you power so he may establish. I want you to pray that. This is a supernatural transformation time. Some of us, the latter glory of our house in the last moments of our life in cumulative <clears throat> influence and covenant penetration will so transcend the cumulative work of our entire life put together. The amount of souls brought forth, the amount of wealth transferred the amount of lives healed and delivered, the amount of breakthroughs that manifest, the superabounding grace of God that transforms humanity from glory to glory in this time is here to manifest. God, you have covenanted with yourself that you would write on the tablets of our hearts and your minds, our minds, your covenant. You said you would act on your own word and write on our heart and mind and our sin and iniquity, you will remember no more. You, God, are using wealth to establish. You, God, are using wealth to establish. You are giving us power to use that wealth to establish. God, I thank you that we are not listening, neither are we looking to, Wealth as a means, we're looking to your power as the means, and wealth as simply the transaction. God, simply the means by which we exchange for souls, we exchange for covenant right, we exchange for delivered families, we exchange for mental deliverance, we exchange for financial well being and stability. God, I thank you that once we have left this earth, there is not one thing on this earth that we take with us. God, we only take what came from heaven and what went back to heaven. And God, we give you praise that this is a new day in our effectual operation of spirit. Mando ado shebona ade ye koyachi u koyakau yo kune na ne o chawe You see God is given the endowing power he's given he gives us power that he might establish 
So God's not giving us what we can already have. He's giving us what is endowing us to use for his covenant to be established. God, I thank you that from every early childhood development through early pre-kindergarten to kindergarten to first to 12th grade to every undergraduate to graduate, we thank you from every hungry soul in this earth looking and desiring and passionately seeking you. God, there is abundance, a superabounding abundance available for you, God, to manifest. We give you praise. Father, that there is nothing outside of your reach. There's no one outside of your grace, and there's nothing beyond the reach of your anointing. You are a spirit. God, I thank you. You will take a person from a far country to establish your covenant. God, you will take even those from islands to bring times of refreshing. Father, I thank you to establish your covenant as you speaking to the hearts and minds of your church, that you write on our tablets of our hearts. You write on the tablet of our mind. God, I thank you. It's not about what we have. It's about who we have. It's not about where we go. It's about where you lead us. You said you would go before us. Your glory would be our real reward. And we give you praise. I want you to pray for the release of that financial anointing that has so endowed my life to break forth out of zero, just like Abraham, like Isaac, like Jacob, like, I mean, oh, my father. You can go through any one of the heroes of faith of Joseph from stripped in a prison to running Egypt. God, that we operate in the supernatural dynamic of your covenant. We operate in the super dynamic of your covenant. God let grace, according to the measure of the gift of Christ, so manifest in us, so we know the part which we function in, or we're effectual in the works that are set before us. And God, you said that you will cause us to ride on the high places of this earth. You covenanted in your word that there's not a word that can stop what you have uttered. God, you have spoken, no man can annul it. You have blessed, no man can curse. We bless you. Yonga Cheoke Chichi Ede Sikhi Oko Achewu Mosaya You think about all of the, the conflicts that the Israelites went through in the in the wilderness and the purpose that was in God it says that he might humble you and make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God does man live. When Jesus was tempted after 40 days in the wilderness, Satan told him, if you be the son of God, command these stones to return to bread. And he quotes and speaks. It is written. 
Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God shall man live. That there is a supernatural sustaining that is designed by God, not <coughs> just to exist, not to survive. God never intended the church to survive. He never intended the church to survive. He only intended the church to thrive with an abounding superabundance whereby it lends and doesn't borrow. God never planned the church to be a debtor people. God only purposed his body to be the possessor of everything that we are as an heir of God and joint heir with Jesus. There is no plan of God for man to be under debt influence. If we're under it, it's because we put ourselves under it. God did not put us under it. And we are breaking the yoke, putting the yoke away from us, ending its cycle of influence, ceasing its torment affliction. This 21 days of fasting has set the body in a place where we will never again go back to what we have become familiar with in our past. I want you to settle in your spirit that you have an absolute irreversible line of demarcation that has been drawn by God that you are to walk in steps ordained by him. That you are called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Everything that makes for wickedness, everything that makes for in bondage and oppression, everything that brings upon weight and burden, that line has been drawn and you are called to trans transist over, to go beyond, to step through, never return to. My God, God, we bless. We bless. We bless. I want you to settle the fact that God has drawn a line. He ended everything in death. So now everything that comes in our life is not by the means of human intervention. It's by means of God's grace. We're saved by grace through faith. That not of ourself is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So something of that salvation of grace by faith is not just eternal positioning. It is eternal functioning. So I'm functional in my position. I'm functional in my position. Just let God expand the perimeters. Stretch out the cords. Lengthen the cords. Stretch out the curtains. Let God increase just as Jabez prayed. Let God expand the capacity of your functionality. God, we're not looking to what man can do. Neither are we looking to what man has. We're looking to you. Our eyes are on you. I bless you. Yes, he says, whatsoever things we desire, when we pray, believe that we receive them. So God, I receive. I receive. 
I receive. Mendo shego ne mendo sabakado. I receive. Abadichi wo kune mese akwete wo chi wo kune mese tai wo ki chi wo. I receive. Chi wo chi akwe chi wo chi wo kumanga yo to hashibonga ne masapai kwe ki chi wo. God, I receive. I give you praise. God, I thank you that I have. I give you praise. Ela hane se ke ne me ha so ko hen de chi wo no man ka de ku ku chi wo chi wo chi wo chi wo ne ka de ne ha sa ba de do do. Yes, I receive. I have. I do ha shi ba de ba ha so ke de chi wo chi wo ne ka ba de shi ge do ke de chi wo chi wo ne ka ne ka ba so ba ku do do. I receive. I have. Ba ha se hen me ha shi wo de ha so ke de ma ha so ko to ha chi wo chi wo ne man ka de de ha so ko ne ka ne ka de ne ka ge de ben do ro ko ne ka de de chi wo to ba do. A ba su fa de di ke de de shi ke de ma ha so ko to ha de ma chi wo yo ko ma chi wo ko ya ba 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 ba. I remember when. Faye and I were living in a trailer that was about to be taken from us in 1976. God had revealed to her a house that she was looking out the window of, and that she was just amazed at the faithfulness of God in the transference of wealth world, and she shared that with me, and she said. How could this possibly ever work in our life when we can't even pay the lot rent and we can't pay the electric? I said because it's not about what we can do; it's about what God has said. Well, you remember when I lived there? Yeah, had to pull out. Yeah. Oh God, you are so faithful. Unwavering, unchallenged, unchanged, and there are no equals. I was at a dinner, and we'll close with this. We'll take a couple testimonies with several that are reaching billions in the earth right now. Not hundreds of millions, but. They are currently reaching billions. We were having dinner together, and a question was asked. And the question was this: How do I get from where I am to the influence of one seventh of the Earth? And two of the of the fellows that were there was simple. They both said the same thing. We must trust. His living words. The letter kills, but the spirit gives life. So when our confidence is that I step out, when Peter was in the boat, he says to Jesus, "If it's you, bid me come." And Jesus said, "Come." Peter trusted. Come. Because the author of come. Was none other than God Himself. You say, but he started to sink because he trusted the effect the waters would have on him. But come still got him back into the boat, and the boat still got to shore. We trust. 
We believe. We act on his living words. And he spoke, all things came into being. And he orchestrates everything after the counsel of his own will. God, what we hear, we step out on. Not what we have, what we hear. What we hear, we step out on. And it comes with persecution. It comes with trial and distress. But God, it comes with you. And we give you praise. Hanuna shakaya kide isukudu mandawe. It's highly possible that within the next five to ten years, the entire known earth could hear the gospel of Jesus. Highly possible. Some of the people that I'm working with have already proven their access to one billion people. With the prophecy of one billion people coming in. Well, they're, they're right now reached. One billion is being reached right at this moment. They're looking at increasing it to 1 billion, 500 million right now. And if we can get 1 billion, 500 million, we can get 3 million or 3 billion because all it is is a multiplier of two. This is God's time. This is God's time. Trust his living words. And the vessels through whom his living voice is being spoken and being heard. Don't take lightly and don't deal with them like they're people. It'd be one of the greatest misnomers you can make. Like when Jesus' mother came to him and said, you've been doing too much, you've got to be hungry. And Jesus said, who are my mother, my brothers, my sisters, but those who do the will of my father. She made the mistake of dealing with him as a man. And by so doing, her entire scope of perception was absolutely denied access because God's ways are not our ways, neither is his thoughts our thoughts. So don't ever think that the vessels through whom his living words are penetrating and piercing and liberating are normal because they're not. God, we give you thanksgiving. We acknowledge your awesome anointing in your person, the inheritance that's in your saints. We acknowledge the awesome person of Christ in your saints. We bless you. We bless you, Father. So does anybody have any testimonies or anything that God's? Well, we had uh, one, one salvation of blessings and dressings and it got baptized with the Holy Spirit. Well, come on up, tell people, let them hear. We had one salvation. Yeah, it's at the blessings and dressings today where we give out free food and clothes to everybody. But the most important thing is we give them the gospel the good news uh, of, of the kingdom. So one person, I gave this invitation, one person that had never done that before prayed and asked Jesus in his heart, 
and got baptized with the Holy Spirit. Praise and he was God. so thankful, he gave me a big hug. <laughs> Amen. So God, God is love. And what we did, we just spoke on the, on the love of God, that how, how, how God loves us. And everyone who loves is of God. And if you don't love, you're not of God. And, and that we need to forgive everybody. Every, anyone that's ever done anything to you, any wrong to you, you need to forgive them. Because God forgave you of a debt that you could never repay. So that means we need to forgive anyone, no matter what they've done to us. And sometimes that might be hard, because some, some terrible things have been done by other people. But you know, you need you need to forgive them, let them go, and just turn them over to the Lord. Let God deal with them. Amen. Amen. Freedom. Anybody else have any testimonies or things I want to share? Breakthroughs. I mean, I. This is one of the most awesome 21 days I've ever walked in on the earth. It is just absolutely incredible. Anybody have anything? Nothing? Yeah. Come on down. So I can say with um, being on the fast, um, thank God for that. Um, because I was looking for something to go into for the new year, because I know Seeds of Greatness was going to do it before I even heard Pastor Gary and them say they were going to do it. So I was with, I was really thankful um, with us getting back into doing the 21 day fast, and it actually helped me with even being at work and God dealing with me, as uh, far as attitude, dealing with people on the phones, um, dealing with me personally. Um, getting back into spending that time uh, with God and, you know, putting my trust back in him. So I really appreciate that. And it just opens you up to um, not being around the gossiping that could go on at work and all that. I kind of distanced myself from that. And now when I go in in the morning, I'm like, God, what do I say? How do I say to the customers, you know, that are being whatever way? And God gives me, the, you know, gives me what to say. So I thank God for that. Um, even at the store, before I came in here, I ran to the store, and uh, one of the guys was um, putting up groceries. I, I walked past him, and God said, nope, go back and ask him what does he need prayer for. He was a young boy. And so I said, you know what? I'm on my way to, um, uh, to church right now for prayer. I said, is there anything you need prayer for? And he was like, um, not really. And then he said, you know what? No, wait a minute. I, he said, you know what I do? I really need a car. And he said, and that's what I really need. I really need a car. And I said, you know, we can touch and agree on that car. And if I hadn't said nothing and was obedient, but I was open, God will open you to, um, when you're fasting and putting yourself before him, he will open up, you know, your natural spirit while well, his spirit for you to say what you need to say. And he was so thankful that I came back to him and said, what do you need prayer for? So, you know, and just seeing what God is doing. So I'm able to minister to people even at my job. So just um, being on this fast has really done a lot for me. Amen. Amen. It's an awesome time. Anybody else? Any testimonies, breakthroughs, God showing you things, giving new directives? Awesome miracles of God. I, uh, I, in the very beginning of the fast, God gave me a thought. And it created four million dollars. It created four million dollars. Just got a thought. This transference of wealth is very real. Very real. So I want you to settle in your spirit. You hear. You hear. You move. And whatever you do, don't get affected 
You know, if you think about the magnitude of God blessing Abraham and all that Ishmael may be of a great nation, and you look at the Mideast and the Arabs and the magnitude of the Ishmaelites, and you recognize God spoke that. God spoke that. God said that. That voice of God. So when we trust his living words, his voice, you might say, but I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter what you think. It only matters that God said, oh, that Ishmael would be a great nation. And God did exactly what he said. See, sometimes we, we think that when Abraham prayed for Abimelech to have children and his handmaidens, if he didn't, if Abimelech, the king of, of Gerar at the time, if he did not have the children, Goliath would have never been born. And if Goliath was never born, David would have never been king. The battle would have never occurred. And sometimes we think it all has to work out in a timeline, in a way in which we see, to our satisfaction, answers that we call a God way that it should work. But here is Abram, before he has a child with Sarai, he pay, prays for Abimelech, king of the Philistines. <laughs> and all of the, the handmaidens, so they would all, because God had stopped their wombs because of Sarah. And they had children first, of which came the lineage of Goliath. And you just, you think, how wise is our God? He has to use someone in covenant even to set up the future that his covenant can be manifested. You know, he hardens Pharaoh's heart to show his glory in Israel. I mean, that, so you think, well, look at, look at how evil that guy was. Well, it was for the glory of God. So I want you to thank God you'd live in a God-directed, God-ordained utterance that releases and manifests exactly what God says. And that we don't walk by sight. We don't live by reaction to the environments we're in. We operate by the dynamic of the utterance of God. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God do we live. Father, we give you praise. And we give you thanks. For this is a new day of walking in your anointing. To do what no man could do on this earth. And fulfill what no man could touch. God, open the eyes of our understanding as we step in tomorrow. And God, as we step in next Saturday, our expectation is your utterance that is spoken will come to fruition. And we give you praise and thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're excited to be with you. We'll be with you tomorrow in my little five-minute prayer segment I send out. At nine is the engaged class, 10 is the service, and then... Uh, we keep on until next Saturday. I, I, I tell you, just really keep Saturday in prayer because if, if we can step over that threshold, everything from hell to earth is about to change in your life. Amen. Well, be blessed. Stay excited. Don't let the devil steal your joy. You only have to track it down, get it back again. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>